What's going on my exotic family? It's your boy Dre. Welcome back to the channel. So today's video, we're actually gonna be talking about the differences between Gila monsters and beaded lizards. Um, so ever since I got my Gila monster, a lot of people are asking me, am I gonna breed my Gila monsters? Am I gonna breed my beaded lizards? I don't think a lot of them realize that they're two separate species and no, I will not be breeding them. So uh, I made this video while well, I'm making this video so I can go over the differences between these two lizards for you guys. So stay tuned. Alrighty, everybody so welcome back to the video i am back with dmx my mexican beaded lizard or heloderma uh suspectum i'm sorry i got them mixed up heloderma horridum <laughs> mexican beaded lizard and he is not happy right now and i have heloderma suspectum which is my gila monster here uh, and they are giving me a workout today so these guys again look very similar but as you can see, there are some color differences as well, if I can get the camera to focus on that. But let me actually put these guys back because they do not want to cooperate now. But I got some B-roll I can throw in here for you guys so you guys can still see the differences, so one second. Alrighty, I'm back. So like I said, we have Heloderma horridum, which is the Mexican beetle lizard, and Heloderma suspectum, which is the Gila monster. Now both of these guys inhibit pretty much the same area. They're the only two venomous lizards in the Western Hemisphere, uh, which can be found all the way from Mexico down to Guatemala. Um, however, the Mexican beetle lizard can actually be found in Arizona, which then makes that the only native venomous lizard we have in the United States. So that's something that's pretty, pretty cool. I have a couple of my friends who actually live in Arizona and have had some encounters with these guys. Thankfully, it hasn't been a very close encounter and we'll get into why that is a little later. Alrighty, so like as mentioned before, beaded lizards and Gila monsters are very, very similar. A lot of people get them confused. You know, they have the same body structure. They have the same kind of, you know, flicking tongue, just like snakes will even have. And they both have those osteoderms, those bony plates that protect them from predators or give them a fighting chance at least. Now, with that being said on the similarities, let's talk about some differences. One of the big differences with these guys is that Mexican beaded lizards, so DMX, my smaller lizard actually right now, will actually get way bigger than than ODB, my Gila monster. Um, those guys can actually reach lengths of up to 30 inches. That is a huge, huge lizard, one that's venomous at that. Now with those guys, they have black bodies with yellow spots as you saw or can see if I got some B-roll up, but they have black bodies with mostly yellow spots. There are some more, but we're generally speaking on the basics here. I don't wanna get into all of that, but black dark bodies, uh, some of them are brown in certain parts of their bodies. And they, like I said, they have yellow spots all over their back. Now, Gila monsters, um, as you can see, are usually a bright orangish, pinkish uh, with black spots filled in between. Now, they both have those really fat, juicy tails, but again, with beaded lizards getting bigger, their tail is gonna be a lot longer, but their tails are used for the same thing, which is uh, fat reserves. So in the warmer months when food is scarce or any time that there's no food, um, they can live off those reserves. Um, so it's said that if they have three good meals, that can last them up to the rest of the year. So that's something that's pretty cool. Um, now obviously in captivity, we don't have that issue, but in the wild, those guys have some pretty cool adaptations to help them survive out there in the desert. So now, since these guys are slow moving lizards, uh, they aren't really good hunters. They are opportunistic predators. So uh, what that means is they kind of just sit and wait for something to come by. But these two lizards in particular, um, they more so go after helpless animals. So wounded animals, baby animals, or anything that they have access to that can't run away from them very fast since they are slow moving lizards. So these guys will eat things like birds, bird eggs. Um, beaded lizards are known for actually climbing trees. They are semi-arboreal lizards. They're actually known for climbing trees in the wild to get bird nests and eat the baby birds and everything like that. But they'll also eat insects. They'll eat smaller lizards. They'll eat um, frogs or whatever else that they can get their mouths on that can't get away. These guys will eat. Now, Gila monsters will eat the same thing. However, they are not known to climb trees. And that's also another reason why the beetle lizards are gonna have that longer tail. It's gonna help them balance in the tree, help them get up the tree. And it's, it's got a little grip to it. I'm not gonna say it's quite prehensile, but my beetle lizard DMX here, I've seen him try to use it a little bit to kind of hang on to a few things, but it doesn't work out too well for him. So that kind of begs a question. Why do these guys have venom? If they are slow moving animals and 
they are opportunist predators, what is the venom for? And the answer is very simple. These guys are not apex predators, meaning they have other predators that will kill and eat them. Anything from big snakes to uh, coyotes to there's birds that will swoop down and get them as well. So their venom is a defense mechanism. So if they get attacked, they can, although they're slow, these guys will swing around on you very fast. That's, that's from experience, which is why I use the gloves. Um, my Gila monster is pretty chill. He'll hiss and like you know flex his body a little bit. But as you guys saw, BMX the beaded lizard, uh, he's a little feisty, but he's still young, and I'm still working with him. So that's why I always glove up with these guys. We don't need any accidents. Um, but um, their venom is mainly used to fight off predators and give them a fighting chance because they are not very fast lizards. So you know if they are getting tormented and they're they're about to be eaten, they can bite you or bite the animal and. Their venom has a lot different effect on other animals than it does on humans. Now, there hasn't been any known deaths since 19, or recorded deaths since 1930, but this bite is a bite that still not should be taken lightly, and I mean that for either animal. Uh, their venom delivery system is pretty much the same, and what that is is they have a, uh, they have their venom glands in their bottom jaw. Unlike snakes, um, their venom glands are in their top jaw. These guys, their venom glands are in their bottom jaw, and they have these grooves in their salivary glands that the venom passes through and it mixes with their saliva and then that is how their venom is administered. Once they bite you and they chew on you a little bit, good luck because um, they have these huge heads. I don't know if you guys can tell, but they have these huge heads and oh man, that bite is, is, is nothing to want to deal with. Uh, I heard the stories, I've done a lot of research about it. That's one thing where I can say I'd rather speak on from someone else's experience versus mine. So with that information, I'm going to put it to good use and again, practice safekeeping. But Again, so if you see one of these guys in, a, in the wild, observe from a distance because they are definitely not afraid to bite and they will definitely let you know they are a, reckon, a force to be reckoned with. Uh, but both very cool lizards, but again, different in their own right. So they're very, very similar, but very, very different. Um, so I hope you guys learned something new today. I did learn a lot about these guys actually when I was doing the research for this video. Um, but let me know down in the comments what you guys think of this video. What did you learn? What did I miss out on? Hit me up on Instagram at DW Exotics. Hit that like button if you liked this video. Hit the subscribe button if you love this video. And as always, stay exotic.